Wellspring Church of All Nations presents Streams in the Desert, hosted by Pastors George and Sharon Stoker. Las Vegas couple bring the life-changing Word of God alive through anointed prophetic ministry. Their teaching causes mountain-moving faith to bring the victory of God's love to bear on the everyday issues of life. Join George and Sharon now as they share with you the secrets and joys of a fulfilling, abundant, spirit-filled, and spirit-led life. Difficult sermon of the year to prepare for it just because if uh, it's it's the one where I take a look at the year ahead and I want to see it through the eyes of God and so we're going to be talking about 2013 looking ahead um, I really love good news so you know I've got a lot of mixed emotions about today's message because what what I what what I see ahead has a, a, you know two sides to it, and for a lot of people it's not going to be fun. For you and I it's going to be fun, but for a lot of people it's not going to be all that fun. But if you remember, <clears throat> in the year two thousand, the, the Lord spoke to me, um, basically out of the book of Genesis and the story of Joseph, and. Uh, his his whole you know he had a, he had a dream if you remember that uh, his uh, brothers uh, and mother and father were all going to bow to him and that cost him quite a bit in fact his brothers all got jealous angry threw him in a pit were going to kill him and then uh, they decided with the help of a couple of brothers were having a conscience problem and they decided, well, we'll just throw him in the pit. We'll figure out what to do with him. And, and uh, then they sold him to the Midianites, yeah, I believe it was, and they took him to Egypt and sold him as a slave. And he went into slavery and then that whole, that whole story and how what his brothers did to him and all the things he went through, he never lost sight of God. And I, that's what I want you to do as you listen today. Do not lose sight of God in the midst of it all. Because it's not all good time Charlie ahead. For a lot of people, it's going to get worse. Of course, that's not going to be you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I believe that. I really do. I really do. I really do. And uh, so th th then Joseph had a, had a uh, the Pharaoh had a, a, a dream. Joseph interpreted it. And basically there were, the bottom line was there was going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And the Lord said, so it shall be in this day. And we did. We, it's amazing. The church, if you remember, the church is, has responded to crisis all over the world with a tremendous amount of wealth, resources, that kind of thing. Uh, many of us have not really been touched by what you could call uh, the financial crisis or the famine. We're working. For the most part, we're a working congregation. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, I heard somebody the other day complaining about their job, I thought, what is the matter with you, idiot? You have one. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, there, there, there's two sides to the coin. Of course, we, we know that uh, uh, the, the plenteous times, there was a lot laid up in store. And then in the famine times, things began, resources all over the world began to dwindle. And the world began to come to Joseph, come to Egypt for sustenance. And, uh, of course, the first, the first thing that they, they did was they bought food because they had money. And then they ran out of money. So they gave their, their livestock. 
you could say, you know, you'll probably see more scooters on the streets as people give their cars away to get to take care of the bills if we were to bring it into modern times. And, uh, you know, after they ran out of their herds, their livestock, and th then they gave their land, their property. They gave that to Pharaoh, the government. Hello? And uh, when that was all said and done, then they said, what have we got? Nothing. But if you'll feed us, we'll become your slaves. And that's when Joseph, uh, he, he was a little kinder, I think, than Pharaoh would have been firsthand. But he said, okay, what we'll do is we'll let you stay on your land and you'll be sharecroppers is basically what, you know, I, I don't know. I, maybe nobody knows what a sharecropper is now. But some of us that are my age and are about that remember there were sharecroppers that someone else owned the property, you got to live there and you got to work the, the ground and you got to keep a certain portion of it. Well, Joseph was pretty liberal. He let them keep 20, uh, uh, he only took 20% for Pharaoh. He said, you just work the land, Pharaoh owns everything, but you know, we'll, we'll let you live on 80%, we'll take 20, a little more generous than our government today. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so, that's just kind of an encapsulation. So as we've gone along year by year, I've, I say, well, if I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet. If I'm not, well, stone me. Who cares? I, you know, it just, <laughs> right? Or I can join the, the rest of them that uh, they just keep going on prophesying. So either way, I'm, I'm glad I'm still alive. So far, so good. And uh, every year I try to, to, to get a hold of the Word of God and, and get a hold of the Holy Spirit and say, okay, what really is ahead? Because I've, I've, I've heard all the prophets. I don't, I, you know, they're not saying anything that I know of. Maybe I won't be either. But it, it's just like the same old warmed over stuff. I don't know. There's, there's, I've run into those problems overseas. All of our well-known, great, wonderful prophets have just about destroyed nations with their wishful words of encouragement or whatever have you, you know. And so th there's friends I have overseas and they say, what is the matter with your people anyway? Do they hear God? Do they know God? But anyway, so there's, there are difficulties. And I, I don't pretend to have all the answers and I don't pretend to be right all the time. And so, you know, I just, I just say, well, whatever you hear from whoever you hear it from, uh, check it with the Word of God, number one, and number two, then watch and see. If it comes to pass, Amen. it's God, as long as it points toward God and doesn't lead you off into, you know, uh, an idol or something. So, with all that said, <laughs> we went through the seven years of plenty. We, the fiscal crisis began to hit the world. And I thought, hmm, and it was right on time. We had seven good years, and then all of a sudden, the 2007, 2008, because, see, the Jewish year kind of overlaps. It, it goes like August, September, it starts. And so it's hard to tell whether I'm working on the Gregorian calendar or the Jewish calendar, what, the Hebrew calendar. I don't know. Uh, I really don't. I, I, you know, it could be either way. But so if, 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 we're, if we're moving ahead into into this year, uh, it would have started on September 16th, the Jewish calendar. Or we can say the new year is going to be, you know, begin in January. Uh, but at any rate, it's, uh, it's the Jewish year of 5373. It's the sixth year of famine. Now remember, seven years of famine. So this is looking good. We're, so far, so good, right, for us? Amen. Uh, I know I've got to, uh, I'm going to be spiritualized it, and I'm going to call a fast on the 1st of January. I'd like you all to join me. Uh, basically, it's, a, it's just a spiritualized diet to get rid of Christmas and <laughs> New Year. But it's good. It's good timing. It really is. And, and it's wise to deprive ourselves of, of food and that kind of thing, to cut back, to get sensible, to uh, 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 just give ourselves over to God and pray. And I'd, I'd like us to do that too, is to fast and pray January 1 through at least January 20th, which is a national day of prayer, which we'll all participate in uh, in our service or 
because God knows our country and the world needs prayer. Amen. Now, granted, when we pray, we expect to hear from God so we know what to do. Because faith without corresponding action is dead. Amen. So we, we've got to put feet to, to what we're believing, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, every year there's, it, it's kind of like in, in Revelation, Jesus talks to the seven churches and he says, uh, he, he encourages them, he tells them, you know, good things. And then he says, but I have this against you. And, and then he finishes it up with, but if you'll straighten that out, I'll bless you. And, and there is always that for the people of God. We, we are in the world, but not of the world. We cannot get wrapped up in the stuff. And, and you, you're, not going to get, you're not going to get a full view of what's going on by listening to the radio, reading the newspapers, reading the internet even. I mean, there's so much. We're overloaded with information. And, and basically, there's a lot of truth. There's a lot of untruth. There's good concepts, not so good concepts. There's just a lot flying around out there. And you're going to need the Holy Ghost to sort through it, whatever your input source is. And I hope if you're a conservative that you will listen to liberal news also. Read it and listen to it. Or if you're a liberal, then listen to conservative news also. In other words, keep your, what you don't know can hurt you. Amen? And uh, I wish I could remember it. Now, you remember Mark Twain's quote uh, that we were, it, it just, it was so good. It said, everybody should travel because travel is, the, is, is devastating to prejudice, narrow-mindedness. There was one other thing. I can't remember. But it, anyway, you can look at that up on the Internet, too. Mark, Mark Twain said it. But it, it's, in other words, get, get outside of your bubble. Prejudices will disappear. Narrow-mindedness will disappear. And, uh, you know, you, you just, you'll, be, you'll feel more secure, too. But don't really do, handle everything through the lens of the Word of God and, the, and by the help, with the help of the Holy Ghost. Because believe you me, we're going to hear all kinds of stuff. Not that we haven't. Well, oh, in case you noticed, the Mayan calendar ran out, but the world didn't. <laughs> We're still here. <laughs> I think that's what this last one was, wasn't it? The Mayan calendar ended, and so was the world supposed to. And lo and behold, here we are. Now, there's a danger in all that stuff, too, because you, people keep looking at Nostradamus and this guy and that guy and what have you, and the world's going to end. And uh, that Satan wants, you, wants everybody to get so used to the apocalyptic uh, events not happening that they forget that it really is coming. Jesus is coming back. And boy, is he ticked. Well, I saw a bumper sticker that said something similar to that, but you can just fill in the... Okay. But he is coming back. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, a lot of things have happened. We've seen, we've seen more, quote-unquote, prophets fall. Leaders in the church collapse and fall, they burn out, they're, they're caught in sin, they're this, that, they're, I mean, all of this, we saw it coming, it's happened, it is happening, it will continue to happen, and unfortunately, all of this tears at the fabric of the church, and the regard people have for God, and for the people of God, and for the men and women of God, so it, it's just, it can be difficult times. But God is love, and love never fails. Hallelujah. And nothing is ever going to separate us from the love of God. The whole key to moving through what's ahead is staying in Christ. Staying in faith. Keeping your confession. What is your confession? Well, it's the Word of God. Because God watches over His Word to perform it. Hallelujah. And, and be, be uh, 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 kingdom-minded. And that'll hold you in good stead. All that, all that being said, it's just...
I've, I've got I, I've got all my I could write a book on on that whole thing and I may put it all together I think, but uh, I want to fast forward this and just come up to where we are right now. It, and if you're familiar with our with the prophecies I've given before, you can check them out on the internet on our website, uh, which is wellspringministries.com in the archives or in the newsletters or somewhere. It's in there anyway, and the tapes even. Uh, that would catch you up and kind of understand where I'm going. But, but here, here, we, here we go again. First of all, I want to start with numerology, which I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not a numerologist. Uh, there's a lot of things that are there that have, some, have truth, but to focus on them is devastating. I know people, everything in the world is tied into numerology, and that can lead you off into witchcraft. Right. I mean, that's like we can love and appreciate the stars. We can even see constellations and the way God set them and named them, or we can begin to let them guide our lives and we begin to worship them. You know, there, there's good and bad in everything uh, in the creation because people make it that way. It's not that they're inherently good or bad. It's just we, we're a strange bunch, people. Yeah. Like my old buddy, the cartoon character Pogo, standing on a hill with his newspaper soldier hat folded on his head and his little wooden sword. And he says, we have met the enemy and he are us. <laughs> you know, and that's always helped keep me in balance. Okay. So here we are. We're in the sixth year of famine. This is good because there was only seven years, right? Amen. Okay. <laughs> sort of, kind of. Okay. <laughs> Six years of famine. It'll run from September 16th to September 6th if we go by the Jewish calendar. And, and the reason that I started looking at the Jewish calendar was that the, when the Lord spoke to me, this, this actually, the eco economic turn began actually in 2000, in, uh, uh, bef the economic tur tur began to turn in the last part of 2007, I believe it was. So it was before 2008. So that gave me an idea that, well, maybe, you know, I should take a look at the Jewish calendar because it starts a little earlier. It's a three, four month head start. But anyway, the number 200, that, and, and the idea is we're in 2013. That's where we're going. Come out of 2012, which was the year of government. If you remember, 12 is the year of government, and there were challenges with that. And I think that we can all formulate our own opinion on how that all plays out uh, with what, what, you know, where we are politically and all of that all over the world. So the number 2,000 uh, comes from 200, which is the number for insufficiency. You know, sufficiency is good. Insufficiency, not so good. But two insufficiently. And then 10, the testimony, the law, and responsibility. So 10 times 200, 2,000. So you've got a year of insufficiency with regard to testimony, law, and responsibility. And I'll, I'll go over that a little further. The 20 also is a number of betrayal. Joseph was sold by his brothers for 20 pieces of silver. But it also speaks of redemption. He was redeemed from the pit and death. Of course, he went into slavery to be redeemed from the pit and death. But and that's a part you probably won't like too much. But anyway, we'll get to that. So anyway, 20 is the number of a double 10. Many cases signifying its concentrated meaning. But its significance seems to be connected with the fact it's one short of 21. You know, that God's, per God's really perfect numbers, whole numbers, all of that. Three, seven, three times seven, 21. 21 is supposed to be a good number, right? So if 20, 21 is the threefold seven, the perfect completeness of God, and signifies divine completion as regards spiritual perfection, then 20 being one short of 21 would signify expectancy. We're looking forward to the plans and purposes of God, which are good in the long run. A uh, lot of scriptures, uh, I guess I could read them to you. You can get them from me later if you want. In, in Genesis 21, 38 through 41, 
20 years Jacob wanted to get possession of his wives and property. Expectancy, right? Uh, 20 years Israel waited for a deliverer from Jabin's oppression in Judges 4.3. 20 years Israel waited for deliverance until Samson, Judges 15.20. And 1631. 20 years the Ark of the Covenant waited at Kirjath Jerim uh, in 1 Samuel 7 2. 20 years Solomon was waiting for the completion of both the temple and his palace, 2 Chronicles 8 1. So, anyway, that's the idea. And 20 it, it then equals famine and lack in Haggai 2 16. And 20, again, is redemption from the pit and death. So it holds that expectation of deliverance. The number 13, biblical meeting number 13, is at times associated with rebellion, corruption. Great, great numbers, aren't they? <laughs> Abandonment, defection, revolution, and to break or destroy. It's the Yod Gimel in the Hebrew, the, the characters, Hebrew characters, that are, are, are 13. And it, it deals with rebellion, 1 Samuel 15, 1 through 24, and depravity. So to write 13 in Hebrew, they, they write the Yod Gimel, and they, that signifies the hand, the Yod, the Gimel is a camel. <laughs> Camels are not really all that cooperative, right? But it's, it's, it's the hand signifying the outworking of pride. Now, you can apply this in politics or wherever you want to. Uh, pride goes before a fall, right? You can apply it to the church. Just look around and, and see where the outworking of uh, pride brings rebellion, depravity, that kind of thing. So, anyway. The first occurrence of, of 13 in the Bible was found in Genesis 14.4, where it signifies a time of rebellion. Twelve years they served Shedelamer, but in the 13th year they rebelled. In Mark 7.21 and 22, Jesus lists 13 sins that proceed out of the heart of a carnal man. And, and you, say, uh, uh, you say is found 13 times in Malachi regarding Israel's rebellion against God's will. And the word dragon, which that old dragon is, that serpent is Satan, appears 13 times in the book of Revelation. I'm just giving you some background on why these numbers have any value at all. But now, it's interesting. In the Jewish culture, it's different because the number 13 deals in reference with someone who is both loving and caring. I don't know where they get that, but they get that. It's a number that at times is considered to be holy. It's interesting. In the Christian world, 13 is like a, you know, it's like a voodoo number or something. It's a bad, right? Uh, only witches and warlocks have to do with it, 13. Anyway, but the number also signifies a turning point from within one's life. Here's expectation again, expectancy. And if you remember, the Jewish boys and girls, I think they bar mitzvah at 12, which is their transition. They become teenagers, okay? And uh, so it indicates increased responsibility and accountability. So there's, there's a little, you get into numerology, there's a little, there's a little, these variations of understanding and what have you. But it's, it's kind of like the scripture. You get them all together and they help clarify things of what's going on. Numbers chapter 13 is, is an interesting book because it's a time to search out the land. I think this is key for us. It's a time to search out the land. God has a future for you. He has plans of good for you. He has a destiny for you. But until you, until you move from the wilderness, where you may find yourself or may not, into the promised land, you're just not going to really be fulfilled. And, and this is a transition I think all Christians make, is, is we get saved, it's glorious, we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's absolutely like the 4th of July, every day almost, and it's just wonderful. And then we begin to, to walk out our Christianity, and we realize that there's a few desolate areas in our lives, and we need to hit an oasis every once in a while. 
right? And, and so, but we're moving toward, we begin to see as we study the Word of God, we're moving toward a promise. We're moving toward better things. We're moving towards uh, the, the fullness of the covenant promised in, in Christ. And so there's an expectancy there that keeps us, keeps our hope alive. We keep moving toward it. We've got to hold on to that. And if you'll remember, the majority, the majority that went in to spy out the land saw the same thing that Joshua and Caleb did. They just saw it differently. And uh, in Numbers 13, I guess I'll start in verse 17. Uh, Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said, Get you up this way southward, go into the mountains, see the land, what it is, uh, the people that dwell there, wh whether they're strong or weak, few or many, what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, uh, what cities they, the, uh, the, they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, what the land is, whether it's fat or lean, whether there be wood or not, uh, be of good courage. Bring the fruit of the land out. And uh, now was the time of first ripe grapes. And, and so they went up and they searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob. And as men came to Hamath, and they ascended by the south, they came unto Hebron. In other words, they, they went through, clear through the land. And uh, they came to the brook of Eshcol and cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two upon a staff. One cluster of grapes it took two men to carry on a pole. We're talking about fruitfulness. Big grapes. I love grapes. Oh, man. Just makes my wa mouth water to think about them. And uh, they brought pomegranates, and they brought fig. Boy, if the grapes were that big, what did they look like? <laughs> I'm, I love figgy pudding. I just, it really, yeah, that'd be good. Okay, so the place is called the Brook of Eshcol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down. And they returned from searching the land after 40 days. They went, they came to Moses, to Aaron, to all the congregation of the children of Israel, to the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, brought back word to them unto all the congregation, showed them the fruit of the land. I think everybody was excited. They'd been wandering in the wilderness. These guys come back from their spying out the land, and they've got this fruit that is just absolutely spectacular. And all of a sudden, things changed. They said, we, 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 we came into the land where you sent us, and, and surely it flowed with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Now everybody's excited. Uh, but, but, uh, but, oh gosh, the people that live there, uh, they're strong. They, they dwell in the land. The cities are walled. They're very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Termites, all of them, they're there. It's bad. It's really bad. It's bad. It's bad. And Caleb said, whoa, 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 whoa. Do I, didn't you guys go with me? Weren't you with me? He said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go up right now and possess it. We're well able to overcome it. Now, here was a man that had a spirit of the living God in him. And he knew that God had given promise. And you think the multitude, they'd listen to him, wouldn't they? Uh, nope. See, we've got to be careful. You may be in the minority where you are as a Christian, as a, as a, as a zealot, <laughs> as a fanatic, or whatever you, know, you seem like to other people. But you know what? You may be greatly outnumbered, but they... I said they are not always right. Amen. <laughs> In fact, most likely they are not right. In fact, if they tell you what you cannot do, you should start rejoicing because the devil is a father of lies and God has already promised you can do all things. Amen. <laughs> so anyway, so he says, Wait a minute, whoop, 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 whoop. we can go, we can take it, we can do this. We can do this. They said, no, 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 we can't go up there. They're giants. We're going to be looking at giants 
of ideology, giants, of all kinds of things that are facing us. And we've got to have the Word of God in us, and we've got to have the, 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 the vision of God and the promise of God so we don't listen to the they. Right? I mean, right now, you know, we're going over a physical cliff! We're going over a physical cliff! We're going over a physical cliff! And everybody's going, ah! Lemmix! Marching to the sea! You know, they're little furry creatures, and they all just follow each other off and commit suicide. I mean, it's just, you know, it's disaster, man. You want to know what? The man calendar ended. The world's still here. The Jan January 1 will come. Guess what? We'll still be going along. Most of us will not even know it went boom. If it goes boom. But people are reacting to the fear of it going boom. Because they don't know what's going to happen. Right? It's what you don't know that's going to hurt you. But, I mean, it's just... Huh? Don't buy into all that stuff. Amen. <laughs> I've written my congressman. I said, hold steady. Don't do anything. When you're in doubt, don't do anything. Pray. You know, I mean, really. Oh, the greatest danger that you and I face, that Christians face today, is listening to the fear mongers and what they say. And it's hard not to do. It's on the radio. Bum, 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 bum. It's in the news. Wah, 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 wah. You know. Well, turn the TV off, maybe. Quit reading the news. I, there was a time, Pastor Sharon, she just said, what the heck with the newspaper? She used to read it cover to cover. Every day, get that thing every day, read it, cover to cover. She knew everything. And then she decided, you know, I'm anxious because I'm reading everything. I know too much. Forget it. She, oh, got back into the Word of God. Great peace came. It was wonderful. <laughs> but the men went up with him. Verse 31 said, We're not able to go up against this people. They're stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched out with the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eats up its inhabitants. And all the people we saw were men of great stature. They were giant-like. They were, and we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which came uh, uh, of the giants. And we were in our own sight, huh? Our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. A lot of times people will see you the way you see you. Christians need to quit seeing themselves as grasshoppers in the land and be bold as lions. Because a part of that in the numerology is, is the lack of what an insufficiency of testimony. Last year we won, this church, this church won over a hundred and some people. I forget how many it was. This year we've won about 42. What happened? It's harvest time. I said it's harvest time. It, it, it's not that people aren't hungry. It's that we're... Somehow we're not connecting with those that are. But they'll be, they'll be more and more hungry as the days go by. But the answer, beloved, the answer is never in a bigger government. The answer is never in somebody else fixing things. The answer is in getting close to God and walking in his covenant. And when you do that, you walk as a Joshua, you walk as a Caleb, you walk as a champion in the land. And you become bold enough to be willing to speak when others disagree with you. In fact, if nobody's disagreeing with you, you're doing something wrong. Because you do have an opinion. And it is important. And nobody has to agree with you. That should never be the basis of friendship. You don't cut somebody off because they don't agree with you. In fact, that's all the more reason to look for a different way to deliver your message and come back around. Even salesmen will, I mean, they'll all tell you, don't ever bring your customer to a no. But if you do, keep moving along because they will not say no more than three times. <laughs> they can't. They've got a coffee yes out, so just stay at it. If you ever tried to buy a car, you know, it's, they have got that down to a science. Anyway, 
So we've got to have the same spirit as Joshua and Caleb. So then our nation and, and most of the nations are looking forward to a year of insufficiency with regard to testimony, law, and responsibility. 20 times 2,000, 200. Testimony, insufficiency. What is the insufficiency? The laborers are few. He said to them, the harvest indeed is abundant, Luke 10, 2. Uh, 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 the grain is ripe, it's ready for harvest, but the farmhands are few. The laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest of us to send laborers into the harvest. We must not allow ourselves to be diminished in our testimony. We've actually got to increase. And we need to, we cannot, each of us, even if we stepped up our level, that became one of our goals in 2013. We're, we resolve we're going to reach out to more people and all. We still need help. We need to pray that others will rise and go into the fields with us. Amen? We are called to be witnesses. 2 Timothy 1.7 said that God did not, and this was for the purpose of being a testimony, God did not give us a spirit of fear or timidity. But of what? Power, love that never fails, and a sound mind, a well-disciplined mind, a well-balanced mind, self-control. And, and revival will sweep the land in spite of the restrictions because those who know their God, which should be us, shall do exploits. And, and it, there are subcultures. I got a lesson in subculture yesterday. What, PSY? PS, what, what is it? Yeah, PSY, isn't it? This rock guy, he's got, he's got more hits on YouTube than anybody, over a billion hits. Now you're all going to go watch and see what it is. But I mean, there's a whole subculture there that I don't necessarily buy into. It's pretty filthy, actually. But I didn't know, I mean, we had almost the whole, the whole buffet Asia of course, it was full of Asians. But they went absolutely crazy because this guy is what? He's Korean, isn't he? He's a Korean rap artist. And, 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 and they just went nuts. We almost had them all dancing. This, Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just... And it, go, it goes from there to worse. I mean, it's bad. See, now, she told me I had to do that in church. Now, she could do it better. But no, 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 no okay. Maybe it was your mother. Anyway... Yeah, so, but there are subcultures, and we have to understand that. There are, and they are in, they are in their culture. And they don't see ours. Amen. We're in one of those. We're just like this. Mm, you know, I'm with Jesus to heck with everybody else. No, we can't be like that. <laughs> Not that you need to learn how to do any of that stuff, because it's bad. It's really bad. Anyway, but <laughs> there, I don't know. There, there's over a billion uh, likes I added to the unlikes. It was 600 and some thousand unlikes, so I'm not alone. But anyway, yes, I did. Okay, she looks at me like, you, what? You couldn't have done that, Grandpa. Anyway, I did. So, <laughs> but there's a, there are, there, there's cultures. Some of them are, are age. Some of them are, you know, just, just venues. I mean, last night, I'm, I'm surfing through the television channels, and there's a whole station for Country Western, I didn't know that. And I wore cowboy boots. I mean, I just, my, my, my birth name was Cecil James Hart, man. I ought to have been all about cowboys. But anyway, I didn't know that. There's, but there are. There, I read about this years ago, that society is segmenting into cultures. And we have to become cross-cultural. Not that we have to become like them, but we can at least become aware of them so that we know how to reach them. With a spirit like Joshua and, and Caleb. And to have a testimony to allow revival to sweep the land. And, and revival will be its own subculture. Because everybody's not going to join in. Everybody's not going to hear about it. Sharon and I grew up in San Gabriel. Just, I mean, we're, we went to school in Pasadena. They were having huge revivals back when we were growing up. We never even heard about Jesus. Except on Christmas, and that was Catholic. None of us were even Protestant, so we didn't know what that was. Cultures, subcultures. 
And such as violate the covenant, he shall pervert and seduce with flatteries. This is Daniel 11.32. But the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong, shall stand firm, and should do exploits. Hmm. There's an insufficiency of the law. We have new laws, national and international, that are going to leave us feeling betrayed by those we elected to represent us, and, and uh, we could say our American brothers and sisters. And I don't care which side of the political fence you're on or if you're in the middle or whatever you are, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same, unfortunately. Why? This deception, this penchant for unjust gain for lust chasing after things that, that they shouldn't have. I wonder if that would apply to all the... Here we are, we're in, it, we're in this spiritual crisis going to go over the cliff and all of Congress and all of the federal, top federal people just got a raise. Well, that's a whole other story. Many so-called Christian brothers will sell committed Christians out. I think that's already begun, but we're going to see more and more of it. And, and it's a betrayal. Joseph was sold by his brothers. Then the Midianite and the Ishmaelite merchants were passing by. The brothers pulled Joseph up, lifted him out of the, the pit or the well, and they sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites who took Joseph captive unto Egypt. And there's going to be an insufficiency of responsibility. Corporations, governmental agencies will continue to pass the buck, throw others under the bus, rather than stand for integrity and morals and honesty and truth and, yes, even ability. Not my fault. <laughs> anyway. 21. Minus one, 20, expectancy. The covenant children of God have a strong expectancy quotient. Keep it. Keep it. God will not disappoint. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. All you who wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Psalm 31, 24. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait for the, on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Huh? with wings as of an eagle. Amen. They'll run, not be weary. They'll walk, not become faint or get tired. Evildoers in, in Psalm 37, 9 shall be cut off. Those who wait and hope and look for the Lord in the end shall inherit the land, the earth. Jeremiah 29, 11. Well, you know that. I know the thoughts and the plans I have, right? For you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard it said once, the earth, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. That would kind of sum it up. <laughs> but that is not your condition and my condition. It doesn't have to be. We're in the world, but we're not of it. And, and it doesn't matter if we're surrounded by enemies. God has promised to set a table in the midst of them and feed us and care for us and commune with us right there. And eventually, if we will stand, they will become our friends. Our enemies will turn and they become our friends because we haven't bought in to what they've heard, what they think, what they... See, Mark Twain was right. Get out amongst them. Travel. Yeah, really. If, if you don't like Asians, go to, go to China, go to the Philippines, go to Indonesia, go to... I mean, I'm serious. It will totally change your mind because they're so loving and caring, hungry for the things of... I mean, they're just people. If you don't like Africans, go to Africa. I'm serious. You got a problem with people of color? Take your little white self, if that's you, into a black nation and walk the streets and, get, and find out what it feels like to be the other. And then find out how loving and caring uh, that, that people are in different countries. I'm telling you. 
Get it, you know, and, and you bring that into our culture here with the youth, with the, these different cultures that are flowing in our society. If we're willing to just step over and not get, it, not get, not get tainted by their stream, but just to see what in the heck? How are you thinking? How can I talk to you? How can I help you? I mean, the whole world is not, you know, I mean, it's just things have to change, right? <laughs> you'll get my age and you do that twice, your back will go out. You know, you got to, there's, there's things you have to plan for the future, right? Whatever. No, but the, the, we, we, we need to move outside of our little boxes and, right? Because here's, here's, here's the thing. Joseph, yes, delivered out of the pit. Sold into slavery. Wow, what a great thing. And then he lived a lavish life in Potiphar's house. Wasn't it Potiphar? Yeah. It was great. You know, then, then of course, Mama thought he was really good looking, and she, put a, she moved on him, and he said, uh-uh, and ran for it. So she accused him of, you know, misbehavior, and he wound up in prison. He didn't go into a big pity party. Oh, I'm in prison. Oh, that. No, he took over the prison. The favor of God. He took over the prison. He ran the prison. He was the best dressed, best kept, best fed prisoner in prison who took care of all the other prisoners. Stayed in tune with God. Must have because he could still interpret dreams and visions. He was moving with God. The circumstances didn't look good, but he's moving with God. The people that he helped out forgot all about him until things really got bad. And then finally, there he is before Pharaoh, and God lets him take over the whole land. I don't know. Crystal may wind up president. I have no idea. Now, what's between now and then may not be all that fun. Of course, she already has had some of that. You know, a little boot camp, a little crawling around in the poison ivy. Uh, you know, you just don't, you don't, don't, it's not a straight line. But see, God has great plans for our young people. God has great plans for us, some of us folks that aren't quite as old as I am. And God has great plans for some of us more mature people like Doug and I. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm. See. Because the expectancy, if we can hold on to that, which we should, but believers must be prisoners of hope. And then apply our faith to that, and it will come. Because we'll be carried to positions of greatness, that which is what happened to Joseph. The people of God receive a place of safety and provision. Isn't that what happened? When, all of, when the whole world's starving, huh? the people of God wound up in Goshen. And even when the world was being cursed by God, they avoided it all. I said they avoided it all. I, I like that part. I really do. I love that part. It's not that we're not going to have a rough time, but it's not, it's not going to be like what the world's going to experience. I guarantee you that. People of God are, uh, uh, will be lulled into expectancy, will keep the people of God from being lulled into complacency. If I'm expectant, I'm not going to get complacent. I'm not going to just kind of give up and, oh, well, you know, okay, sarah, sarah, laissez-faire, this is just the way it is. No, I'm not a Frenchman. I believe, I believe that God has got a plan and a purpose for my life and, I, and the people of God's life, your lives, and I, we're going to get there. Hallelujah. The people of God will, though, fall in. What the visible church, I'm not talking about you guys, but I'm talking about the visible, quote unquote, so called church are going to be lulled into complacency. We're already seeing them just drop. Everything's down. It's okay. Homosexuality is okay. Okay. Yeah. Abortion, that's okay. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Shocking up. Oh, no problem. Everybody's doing it. It's okay. It's all right. Grace, God loves me. It's okay. I'm okay. You're okay. Uh uh. Or it used to say, God winks. No, he doesn't. He's got nothing in his eye. He sees clearly. <laughs> huh? But see, God always has a remnant people. God always has 
those that are really sold out the whole route for him. And we are, I, 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 I trust every one of us is, is counted in that number and we are going to go through without the smell of smoke on us, even when we go through the fire, without even getting wet when we go through the flood. Hallelujah. The fourth man is with us. The people of God are going to be led into captivity. Oh, don't like that one. Well, what happened? Israel, I mean, the, the Jews eventually wound up as slaves. This is not our near future, but it is our future. Well, I'm in a rapture. Not before all this happens. Now, you may live your life out, but eventually that's what's going to happen. We already have Romney's 47%. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that 40% of the people are living off 53%. And that will soon shift over. And what happens there is you, you, you just keep looking to someone else to supply all your need other than God. And it becomes more and more difficult for those that are paying the bill. It's called higher taxes. What is it? Spain, they tried to pass 73% tax on the rich. It did get shot down. 73%. That means what? You get to keep 27% of what you own or, or earn? Well, anyway, but there's a captivity. Where, and, and as much as I'd like to say there's never going to be a one world government, there is. You might as well get used to it. We, we need to be the salt. We need to be the light that will resist its happening. And that's what will keep it on God's time. But it will come. But like I wrote in my book, Integrity, the, I believe in a one world government. And that one will come. But it will also go in the victory of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And we will set up a one world government. And guess who's going to be king? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 But there will be a captivity, and, and you'll see it. I think we've already seen it. Churches that are, they want to save their 501c3. And so they won't talk about things that really matter. Because they've bought the lie that if they lose that, they're not a church and they're not, not for profit. But that's a lie. <laughs> that's a myth. But whatever the reason, to begin to just water down the Word. That's why I still hang on to the King James Bible. It's not perfect by any means, but it's... So many of the newer versions, they delete the blood. They delete the deity of Christ. They do, it's okay to read at, along with. Of course, it's even better if you, if you read Greek or Aramaic or Hebrew, but... You know. And and the but but here here's the great thing: the people of God will be delivered, not just from the pit and death, praise the Lord, we'll, but will be delivered into the promised land. And that's when the rapture will happen. A lot of people are looking for the rapture now. They're they're prophesying the rapture is right here. No, it's not. I don't believe. Right now, Iran will have enriched uranium necessary for a bomb in three to five months. We were in on a, uh, what do you call it? They, they, they tell you what's going on. And uh, they're that close. Nobody's going to allow them to get the bomb. What that means, I have no idea. I really don't. How it's going to be dealt with, I really don't know. Somebody is going to make it not happen. North Korea has uranium but lacks the technology to build the bomb and deliver it. How, but Iran's over there helping them. But remember, I grew up with, who was it? That, was it the Smothers Brothers or who? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Kingston Trio, yes. One day they'll set the bomb off and we'll all be blown away. You know. 
They were singing that back then. That's all I'm saying. And they're singing it now. God's got... God's got... God's got it. Okay. Because <laughs> there's not too many nations that really want North Korea to have a nuclear weapon they can deliver to U.S. soil either. So, anyway. But the church won't be raptured soon. You say, well, why do you think that? Well, number one, Damascus is still existing. And just one verse in Isaiah 17, 1 says, The mournful inspired predictions are burdened to be lifted up concerning Damascus, the capital of Syria, Israel's bulwark against Assyria. <laughs> Behold, Damascus will cease to be a city and will become a heap of ruins. Not happened yet. Not happened yet. Watch Damascus. They're having a lot of fun over there, blowing buildings up, but it's still there. And that, that's just one of many things. There, there is no temple built in Israel uh, for an antichrist to come and set himself up and declare himself as God. They're not even close. A lot of people think that, well, that we're, we're going to have the rapture. There's going to be the, great, the battle of Armageddon at Megiddo. We're going to come back with Christ. All this is going to be settled. Not until the temple's built. Because the, the temple in Ezekiel 38, 39, that, that temple is not a millennial temple like many have taught. That's a temple that will be built when there is a resurgence of quote-unquote spirituality in Israel that will come when, I don't know what kind of a war we'll call it, but the, all the nations are going to gather against Israel, come against them. This could be very soon. Come against them. And God, it'll take God to intervene and save Israel, and it, but it'll be so worldwide that all... Almost all of the Jews, and believe me, they're as apostate as can be. Tel Aviv is a party city. Uh, you know, a lot of Jews are not practicing Jews. But they'll all get religion real quick after this. And they will all join together with the Orthodox Jews and they will get this temple built. The thing is that the ge there, there'll be such a cataclysmic event over there that the geography will change. And there'll be room on the mount to build the, the, what's called the Millennial Temple, which is actually not a Millennial Temple. It's, it's the last temple. It's the big temple. It's huge. It's huge. It would hang out over the Kidron Valley if they built it now. But that's all going to be flat. And they'll build that temple. And that will begin to set things now. Then the Jews will be popular. People won't mess with them anymore. Because God's on their side. There'll be a great revival all over the world. It'll be a wonderful thing. Everybody will be at peace with Israel. But the same old prejudices, that same spirit, will again stir up the nations. And that will be, that will be when you have all your apocalyptic end time things happen. And you'll, you will, will, the church will rapture and we'll come back with Jesus and things will wrap up really nicely. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. One thing, I just want to read this to close just because it's a nice word, and I believe it's true. <clears throat> because, again, here is the Christian doesn't have to look at things like the world does. God makes a way where there is no way. Promotion comes from the Lord. Amen. He gives the, the ability to get wealth, adds no sorrow to it. Amen. That has not changed for us. Ken Copeland on August 2012 and read in December of 2012 said this, 2013 is the year of great grace. <coughs> and the Lord spoke this to him. And I, I, I believe the Lord did. He said, stay where you are. Stay steady. Where you are in God, stay steady. Don't let fear make you run all over the place, in other words. 
Don't be chicken little. Sky is falling. Sky is falling. Just enter into the peace of God that passes all understanding and stay where you are. Because your greatest blessing ever is at hand. No one can stop my plan for you. It's a blessed plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that's what God has said. And that, that's what God is doing. He said, stay on my word. Stay strong in faith. Insist in walking in my command of love. Hmm? Dr. John, really, that's what he was talking about. If we operate in love, we, we suddenly become interested in others and their condition. And we walk in love toward them. Thank you for being with us. We count it a privilege and a sacred trust to bring you the words of truth found in Scripture. It's our prayer that you've been strengthened and encouraged by this message. And it's our heart's desire that you come to know Jesus like never before and that you're drawn into the Word of God by the Spirit of the Lord working through these sermons. Other teaching CDs, DVDs, books, and brochures are available in our bookstore and media store, or you can purchase them on our website at wellspringministries.com. Our phone number is 702-631-5027. Give us a call if we can serve you in any way. We look forward to our next opportunity to be with you and share with you the wonderful, life-changing things of God. May God richly bless you as you pursue your high calling in Christ Jesus.